Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants. And today we're here at Allen's home in West Hills. Thanks, Allen, for having us. Please. We're about 30 miles northwest of downtown Los Angeles, and here we are adjacent to a Mineola Tangelo. Let me share that with you here. So in this educational lesson, we're gonna be talking about whitewashing and pruning and watering practices. And um, and Alan, um, thank you so much for having us and, and, and let's get started. Thanks, Charles. Charles, come on, I wanna bring you to a place that uh, on the property that I call no man's land. It's a little bit dramatic, but all it means is no man has irrigated it. There's no uh, water running to this place. I, I do come by occasionally and hand water it, but uh, there's no regular irrigation system going on these uh, plants. I chose them for their drought tolerance-ness. And uh, let me show you how they're doing. Now, if you come up here, Charles, you'll see a plant you might recognize. <laughs> Uh, this is the lemon plant uh, that Charles brought me last year uh, that we originally planted to replace the lemon tree that we had to uh, get rid of. Um, and as you can see, he's doing great. He's got new growth. He found a new home back here in the backyard. And uh, he's going to be a very convenient tree to come and get a lemon off of in the future. That's awesome. Yeah, it's right there. Get a lemon. There's no lemons now, mind you, but one day there will be. One day very soon. Check out those flowers. Oh, yeah, you're right. In the front, too. That's great. So uh, he's receiving no irrigation and he's doing pretty well. Uh, come on, we got this uh, pomegranate tree and uh, I was told that pomegranates are extremely drought tolerant plants and uh, these two have lived up to their words. Uh, they've gotten no uh, regular water. I come by, uh, you know, maybe a couple times a month and dump a pail of water on them and that's all they get. Um, so these are both uh, two trees that have been transplanted. They're now on their second year in their new location and uh, they seem to be happy. You know, uh, there was a third that didn't make it unfortunately, but uh, these two did. A lot of new growth coming. Yeah, these are, these are really robust trees. And here we are the first week of March. First week of March. Um, March 1st, I believe right now. Correct. Um, and uh, yeah, this is a tangelo. This was a tree that wasn't doing so well uh, in the main uh, garden, the irrigated garden. And uh, rather than uh, kill him, I decided to put him over here in no man's land. And ironically, he's doing uh, very well. Um, behind me, we have two other uh, trees that I got with the property. There's one's in a Eureka lemon tree and the other one's an oral grapefruit. And both of those also receive no regular water and uh, they're doing great as well. I hope to remove all the citrus trees at one point from regular watering and, and have it be just a drought tolerant, uh, edible landscape. So here we are now alongside the Mineola tangerine and Alan explained to me that he had transplanted this from another part of his garden about a year ago. He said at the start of um, 2018, he brought this tree to this part of his garden. And as you can see, it's lacking on foliage. It doesn't have any leaves. It's not really growing. There is some growth within it, which we'll zoom in on it in just a moment. But what is happening is there's a lot of death and wherever there's a dead branch, as you can see, there's no life in it. There's no new growth. If you follow this branch up as well, you can see again, this branch structure is also drying out. It's completely brown, no signs of life. If you take a look at these other branches over here, you might see there's a little bit of new growth coming out in these sporadic um, areas. When it comes to citrus, as with avocados, um, they're one of the most sensitive plants when it comes to overexposure to sunlight. They quickly will burn, whether it be first, second, and third degree sunburns. If you can come in on this side, so even though you may not see the cracking that's evident with a third degree burn, there is that risk of damage to the underlying cambium tissues, which are underlying the bark. What we're gonna do first, whenever there's dead wood, we've gotta remove it. So what we're gonna do here with our pruners is we're first going to remove all of that dead wood from the plant. We're basically pruning to the next healthy branch and we're gonna make a nice clean cut so that as the stem expands, it'll eventually heal over those pruned areas. And we're gonna do the same thing here with this branch as well. And again, we're gonna prune that like so. And we're gonna continue removing the dead wood throughout. So now we've just removed all the dead wood. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it back another 10 to 20%. The 
reason for that is, again, this was transplanted about a year ago and it's not doing well. And my concern is that the root part of the structure of the tree is smaller than the overall tree size that's above ground. And the goal is to make sure they have a base that's stronger and more developed than the upper plant structure. And if it's out of balance where the upper plant structure is larger than the base, then we can't really expect much as the base is not gonna be able to support this much of a structure. And that may be some of the struggle and the stress that's happening within the plant. If we can bring the plant where the overall upper part of the structure is smaller than the base, then we're gonna see the vigor and the growth and the health that we'd otherwise expect. So um, I would recommend if you see a distressed tree such as this, is to actually bring it in check by bringing it back another 10 to 20 percent so that's what we're going to do now i'm basically following the leaf nodes i'm coming back and i'm selecting a place where there is a node with some life coming out of it and i'm simply going to cut it about a quarter of an inch above the node like so and you're also going to want to try to do that as an at an angle and the reason for cutting at an angle is to make sure that water does not accumulate and potentially rot the tip. So we're gonna continue pruning like so throughout the entire structure. And take a look at this um, branch again. You might be able to spot the life that's coming out right here. And again, I'm gonna be cutting at a quarter of an inch above at an angle. And that will be the continuation of the next branch. And we'll continue pruning like so. Next up I want to share with you is watering. I noticed that I noticed that when it comes to watering, Alan's got this plastic container with a hole that helps get the water down into the root zone. That sounds like a great idea and it's an excellent way to get water rapidly down into the root zone of the plant. So the best practice when watering your plants, whether it be your fruits and vegetables, or in this example, we're dealing with our mineola, is to mimic rain. The key word is mimic rain. Water your plants as if it is otherwise raining. And not necessarily by wetting the leaves, as that can sometimes lead to disease, is to make sure that you're watering the root zone. And by doing so, what you're doing is you're not just watering the root ball or getting water at the lower level, you're going to want to water all of the soil surrounding the plant and basically making sure that all of the roots are getting water. Um, whether you use a soaker hose or using a sprinkler, but when using a sprinkler, be careful also that the trunk doesn't remain continuously wet as well. Um, and also keep in mind that when you're watering the root zone of the plant, you're also watering the earthworms, the beneficial bacteria and the beneficial fungus that exist in the soil. And that's gonna to lead to optimal health of your plants and trees on your property. So the next thing we're gonna do is now whitewash the structure. We've got this citrus tree and it doesn't have any leaves on it. We don't have the leaves that will otherwise protect the underlying stems and branches and ultimately the tree trunk. And I always like talking about protecting the heart of the plant and the heart of the plant being is the tree trunk and the primary branches that are gonna be with us for the entire life of the tree. If the heart of the plant is affected, whether it be by sunburn or pests that are boring into it, or if there's girdling, which is when rodents will chew on the tree trunk to get to the underlying saps, which is typically a winter phenomenon. And we actually found an example of that here in the garden. I'll try to, um, I'll share that with you as well, is that you're gonna to wanna to protect it with a product such as this. And Ivory Organics has come up with an organic way to offer your plants protection against damaging sunburn and insects and rodents, it's registered material for use on organic agriculture, and it's for use on basically all of your plants, from your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees and shrubs. And the way it works is it's got these seven natural garden oils, which include castor, cinnamon, clove, garlic, peppermint, rosemary, and spearmint. And then it's got these base ingredients, and the last one, as of 2019, now includes diatomaceous earth. So. The oils offer repellent for the rodent protections. The castor and the mints offer rodent repellent protections. The other oils offer insect protection to basically keep beetles and termites from entering now these exposed pruned areas from going into the tree and potentially hollowing out the wood um, within the 
within the supporting structure of the plant. So that's just another reason for whitewashing. The added diatomaceous earth, which you'll find in the 2019 formula, currently available through homedepot.com, as well as on Ivory Organics, and it will be on all of the stores that carry the Ivory Organics products, hopefully between spring and summer. Um, but be on the lookout for that. For those of you watching, you now know that the new formula includes diatomaceous earth, which offers your plants even additional further insect protection. For those of you that understand the benefits of what diatomaceous earth does in the garden setting. Charles, thank you so much for helping me with this tree. Um, I know this tree got transplanted and lost a lot of its foliage uh, in the transplant. So now we have it nice and protected uh, going into the summertime when those uh, hot temperatures flare up. And uh, I'll send you some pictures and we'll see if we can get a canopy growing back on this tree. Yeah, please do um, keep me up to date. I'm glad we've been um, friends for the last couple of years as we did our first lesson on lemon trees about a year ago. I'm happy that we're able to now work with this miniola. So whitewashing protects against the extremes in weather, whether it be the extreme high heats of summer or the cold freezing winters as well. Whitewashing pretty much insulates the plants and helps curb those extremes. Um, and here in West Hills, I know that we do have um, freezing nights as well, right? Yeah, uh, in, the, in the coldest part of the winter, it does reach freezing. So it reaches near freezing and here we are enjoying not just this miniola, but there's a ton of other citrus, which I'm gonna give you a tour on as well, um, that he's successfully growing on his property, close to what, a dozen? Uh, I believe there's 60 fruit trees in all. Uh, I believe about 30 of them are citrus, 30 of them are pineapple guava. That's awesome. So about 60 fruit trees, half of them are citrus and they're, and they're thriving very well here with, again, a climate that does reach freezing temperature, freezing nighttime low temperatures here in West Hills and summers that are probably approaching 100 degrees too. Uh, past over 100 degrees and um, and he's done it successfully. And these are just some techniques to help you grow your food that much more successfully. So again, thank you so much for having us. Thank you, Charles. If you've enjoyed this educational moment brought to you by Ivory Organics, be sure to give us a thumbs up. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe and also be sure to hit that push bell notification so you get notification as soon as one of these educational moments becomes available. Thanks again for watching and wishing you all happy gardening. We grow cool plants. We grow cool plants. So I hope you enjoyed this educational moment brought to you by Ivory Organics. And if so, be sure to give us a thumbs up. And most importantly, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. For those of you that have already subscribed, don't forget to hit that push bell notification. And as always, just want to remind you to keep on growing with Ivory Organics. Wishing you all happy gardening.